resurrection is perfect gallows. There's no drowning mark upon him. Then thus with faith to his hanging, make the rope of his destiny our cable. For our own doctrinal advantage, if he be born not to be hanged, our case is miserable. Thou remembrest, 
all to hear how about chemistry? How about chemistry thou makes? But that I do not. Twelve years, woman. Twelve years since thy father was the Duke of Milan and the Prince of Power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue. And she said, Thou was my daughter. And thy father was the Duke of Milan. And his only heir, a princess, no worse than she. Well, what foul play had we that we came from this? Or bless us, we did. Both, my girl, by foul play, as thou sayest, will we heed this. But blessed me, hope here. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the team that I have turned into.
now is upon them, without which this story were most impertinent. What if for did they not let our destroy us? Ah, uh, well demanded. My two open books had their question. Dear, they durst not. So dear to love my people for me, nor set a mark so bloody on the distance, but with colors fair painted their foul ends. And few they heard us aboard the bark and bore us some leagues to sea. Yeah, they prepared a rotten carcass of the butt, not rape nor tackle, sail nor mast, the very rats instinctively have quitted. There they voiced us to cry to the sea that roared to us. To side to the winds who again side back did us but the loving wrong. Alas, what trouble was I then to oh. you? Oh, cherubim, thou wast thee to preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with the fortitude from heaven. When, when I have dead the sea with drops full of salt, under my birth and groan, and, and raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. Oh, by providence divine, some food we had, and some water, that a local Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, did give us with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries that since us needed much. Oh, so, so of his gentleness. No I left my books. He furnished me with volumes from my own library, which I prize above my duty. I might never see that again. Come, sit. We hear the last of our sea song. Here we arrived on this island. And it's here that I, thy schoolmaster, have made me more profit than other princes can who have time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it. And now, I pray you, sir, for still it is Beating in my mind a reason for raising the sea storm? Well, thus far forth. By <laughs> accident most strange. Now, my dear lady, hath my enemies brought to this eye. And I do find that my prescience doth depend upon most auspicious stuff, whose influence if now I court not, but omit my fortunes will ever after true. Here cease my question. Thou art inclined to sleep. It is a good dome to see you awake. I know thou canst choose. <laughs> Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach my error. Come. All hail, great master, brave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, but to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to run on the crumb cloud, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel in all her quality. Oh, hast thou spirit performed the point that tempest I made thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ships, now in the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places, on the top maps, the yards, the bow spirit, what I blame distinctly. Then me and join jokes like this of cursors, all the dreadful thunderclap for momentary and sat up running for naught. The fire cracks of sulfurous roaring most mighty Neptune seemed to siege, make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread tried its shape. Oh, my brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not affect his reason. Not a soul with felty fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All the mariners plunge into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all the fire with me, the king's son Ferdinand, with hair upstairing. Then, like reeds, not hair, with the first band that leaped and cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. Oh, that's my spirit, but, but what's this nice shore? Close by, my master. But are they here with safe? Not the hair perished. I dispersed them about the isle, the king's son that I had landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs, and an odd angle in the isle, sitting with his arms in his sack. <laughs> of the king's ship, the mares, say how thou hast disposed in the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship in the deep nook, the mariners all under hatches stowed, who with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep, and for the rest of the fleet which I have dispersed, they all have met again, and upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples. Supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perished? Oh, Ariel, 
aerial lights are it's exactly as performed. But there is more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. It's the hour 26, and now by us both must be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. But how now? Moody, what is it thou hast demanded? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I print thee, remember I've done thee, worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistake, thee served without grudge or grumbly, thou hast promised to make me a full year. Hmm. Hast thou spirit forgot what a torment I did free thee from? No. Thou oh, hast. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul which sick wax with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her and her son Callum? No, sir. Oh, thou hast. Thou best knowest what a torment I just free thee from. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of ever angry bear. It was a torment to lay upon the death which Sycorax could not again undo. By my heart, my rise and hurt thee, that made the gate of time and set thee free. I thank thee, Master. If thou murmurest more, I will bring the oak and bury thee in his naughty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, Master, I will be correspondent to to men, and do my surgeon gently. Do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Ah, go make thyself like a nymph of your ship. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this one and hither come in. No. Hence with the diligence. Awake, dear heart. Awake. Thou hast slept well. The strangest of your story, the heaviness in me. Shake it up. Come, we'll visit my slave Caliban, who never yields his kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as it is, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. Set, till 
that we didn't see the violator. Oh my child! <laughs> what has been done to doubt the penalty? I am people else this hour, Caliban! Born slave, which any pretty goodness will not take, being capable of all evil. I pity thee. Pains to make me speak. Talk to each hour one thing or other. Thou didst not savage know thy own meaning, but to gabble like a thing most brutish. I had doubted thy purposes with words to make them know. She taught me language, and my prophet on it is that I curse. The red plague read you to learn me a language. Hence, hence, that is a deal with me quick. Thou art best to answer the business. Oh, <laughs> sure is that. If thou neglect all, thou art unwilling what I command thou. I will rack thee in all the crowns. I will fill all thy bones with eggs. I shall make thee raw! The beast shall tremble at thy end! Please! Oh, so sweet! Yes. <laughs> Sitting on a bank, weeping again, the king, my father's wake. This music crept by me upon the waters. I like both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather, but it is gone. No one begins again. Say what thou seest the other. What is this spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No, wench. It eats and sleeps and has such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the ring. And but he is something stained with grief, and that's beauty's canker. Thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I meant to call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. O oh, spirit, fine spirit, I will free thee within two days for this. O oh, sure, the goddess on whom these heads attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I can last pronounce is, Oh, you wonder if you be made or no? No wonder, sir. You certainly made. My language? Heavens! I am the best of them that speak this speech. Where I'm glad to spoken. Ha! Ah, the best! What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep myself in Naples. With mine eyes, Never since an end, beheld the king, my father reigned. Alas, for mercy. Yes, faith in all his lords, the Duchess of Milan, being twain. 
The Duke of Milan and his more brave and will control me if now it will fit you to it. At first sight, they have changed our eyes. Ah, delicate I will free you for this. One word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so much gently? This is the third thing that e'er I saw. First that e'er I sighed for. Pity moved my father to make climb my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection's not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of nature. Stop, sir! One word more. They're now in the Irish powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make. Let's two like winning make the prize light. One word more. I charge you, thou attend me. Thou dost here assert the name thou owest not, and, and hast put thyself on this island as a, a spot to win from me the Lord of it. No, as I'm a man. There is nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. The O Spirit has the fair house, good things you strive to dwell with it. Follow me and speak you not for him. He's a traitor. Come on. I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shall thy drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brick mussels, with the roots and the husks wherein the acorn grain. Come! No! I shall resist such entertainment till my enemy has no power! Would you follow me not to rock and trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful? What? I say my foot, my tutor! Thy sword up, traitor, who makes the show but dares not strike. Ah, thy conscience is possessed with guilt. Come from thy word, for I hear thee disarm thee with this stick, and make thy sword throughout. Beseech you, Father. The hits hang not on my garments! Sir, have pity. I'll be your surety. Silence. Thou say another word, it shall make me chide thee, yes, not hate thee. What? An advocate for this imposter? Uh, thou thinkst there are no more such shapes as he in the world, having seen but him a Caliban, foolish witch. To most men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a good man. Come, thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued are but light to me. Might I but once a day, through my prison, behold this maid, all born cells on the earth, let liberty make you so. Space enough I have in such a prison. It works. Come! Thou hast done well fine, Harry. Follow me! Huh? What shall else do we? Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than he hears my speech. This is a motto which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountains, but then to all points do as I command. To the syllable. Come, follow me! Speak you not for him. The merchant have just our theme of wealth, but for the miracle. I mean our preservation. Few in millions can speak like us. Then why is the good shaft weigh our sorrow with our comfort? For the peace. He receives comfort like cold torrent. The visitor will not give him or so. Look, he's winding up with the watch of his wit. By and by, it will strike. Shaft. One tell. If every grief is entertained that's offered, it comes to the entertainer. A dollar. The Lord <laughs> comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you have purpose. You have taken it wiser than I meant you should. Therefore, my Lord. Fire, what a spendthrift is he of his tongue? 
I'm pretty spare. Well, I've done. But yet, here is everything advantageous to life. True, save means to live. Of that, there's none, or little. Well, how lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground is indeed tawny. With an eye of green in it. <laughs> but the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit, that our garments, being as we were drenched in the sea, oh, notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water, Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we first put them on in Africa at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabel to the king of Tunis. Twas a sweet marriage. We prosper well in our return. Shut up. We were talking that our garments are now as fresh as when we first put them on in Africa at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that are king there. Shut up. Is not my doublet as fresh as the first time that I wore it? The peace, I mean, in a sort. We name Bury get your daughter's marriage. You cram these words in my ears against the stomach of my sense. Would that I never married her there, for coming thence I lost my son. And in my rage, she too, who's so far from my moon, I never again shall see her. My dear, the eagles belong. A strange fish hath made his meal of me. Uh, he may live. No. No, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss that not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she at least banished from your eye who had cause to wet the grief of it. Prithee, peace. We have lost your son. I fear forever Milan and Naples have more widows of them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the lost. <laughs> My Lady Bastiana, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and time to speak it in. You rub the saw when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most certainly. It is foul weather and a saw good, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, no, I warned you. I will not adventure my discretion. Will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. What? I'm oh, so soon asleep. I wish that my eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will watch your person while you take your rest and guard your safety. Thank you. Wondrous. Heavy. The strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why it doth and not that our eyelids sink. I find myself not disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble, and they fell together as by consent, as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Bastiana? <laughs> oh, what might? Uh, no more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be, the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What art thou waiting? Do you not hear me speak? I do. Noble Bastiana. Pretty, say on. The setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee and a birth indeed which throws me much to you. Thus, lady, the king, his son's alive. Tis as impossible that he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, and out of that no hope, what great hope have you? Can you grant me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me. Who was the next heir of Naples? My brother's daughter, Queen of Tunis. So, is she heir of Naples? Twits which regions there is some space. Say this for death, that has now seized them. Why, they are no worse than now they are. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep is this for your advancement? Do you understand me? Methinks I do. 
And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did some things your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me, much fitter than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now, they are my men. But for your conscience. I where lies that? Here lies your brother, no greater than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead. Whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, shall lie to bed forever, whilst you, doing thus, we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou dost belong, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the queen, shall love thee. Draw together. And at the rear of my hand, you do the like, and fall it on Gonzalo. Oh, but one word. My master, the resort, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and since we force for else his project dies to keep them living. Shake off slumber and beware! Awake! Awake! And let us be sudden. Now? Angel! Preserve the king! Huh? How? Now? Oh, awake! What's the matter? Where are you from? Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now we have a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls, or rather lions, did not wake you, it struck my ear most terribly. I heard nothing. T'was it didn't fright a monster, dear, to cause an earthquake sure it was a roar of a whole herd of lions. Where did this Gonzalo? Or my Anna? Sure, I heard a humming, and a strange one too, which did awaken me. As my eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. Well, there was a noise, that's barely. Tis best we stand our guard, or that we leave this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, then. Let's make further search of my poor son. Heavens, keep him from these peas, for he is sure on the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord shall know what I've done. So king, go safely on to seek thy son.
alive? <gasps> or dead? <gasps> Man? Or fish? and fish-like smell. Be, but he is drowning, and 
knees are devils. Oh, don't leave me! Four legs and two voices. A most delicate poster. His forward voice now was to speak well of his friend. His backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If it should take all the wine in my bottle, I'll help it to you. Come on in. I'll pour some in my other mouth. Mercy, this, this is a devil and no monster. I shall leave him. Step on out! If thou be Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I entreat you, O. Be not feared, thy good friend. Treat you, O. If thou be a treat, you know, come forth. I'll pull thee by thy lesson. Can he bend drinking of soul? I took him to be killed by thunderstroke. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now that thou art not drowned, as the storm overblown. I hid me in the dead moon cast gabardine. These be fine things, if they be not sprites. That's a brave god of rare celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How did thou escape? How came thou hither? Wait, wait. Swear by this bottle. How thou came hither? I escaped by the butt of sack which the sailors used on board. By this bottle, which I made with my own hands and rock of a tree since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, mm. for the liquor is not earthly. Oh, me? Swear that thou art a scapist! Swim ashore, man! Like a duck! Oh, I can swim like a duck! I'll be sworn! Here, kiss the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a duck! How does thine keep? Has thou not dropped from heaven? As for the moon, I do assure thee. That was the matter in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her. My mistress has shown me thee, and thy dog, and thy bush. Come, um, swear to that. Get the book. I'll furnish it up with new contents. Mm -hmm. Swear. By this good light, this is a very evil of him. A very weak monster. The man. Most poor, credulous monster, with a drawn monster, and good suit. <clears throat> I'll kiss thy foot. I pray thee be my God. By this light, and most profitous and drunken monster, when God's asleep, he brought his bottom. <laughs> I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on then, down and swear. <laughs> I should trap my subject down oh, to this puppy house! A monster! I could find it in my heart to beat you, Jonathan! But the monster's in drink! An abominable monster! I'll show thee the best of springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough! upon the tyrant I serve. I'll bear no more sticks. But follow thee, thou wondrous man. O oh, most ridiculous monster, to make a wonder of a poor, poor drunkard. I pray thee, let me bring thee where crabs grow. With my long nails, I'll take thee pig nuts. 
I showed the adjacentness and instructed you how to withstand the name of set. Sometimes I'll get the young scammer from the rock without going with me. I pray thee now, lead the way without any more talking. My new task would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's craft, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never lost except at all. I forget. But these sweet thoughts will even refresh my labors. Most busy less when I do it. Alas, now pray, work not so hard. I would have likely had birds with those odds that you were joined to pile. Pray sat down and rest you, to this burns of relief for having wearied you. My father's hard at study. Pray not rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress. The sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your long smile. Pray give me that, and I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. Well, it would become me as well as the dusty, and I should do with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. You look weary. No, no, mistress. Tis but fresh morning with me, when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly so I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your heads to say so. Admire, Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. You, so perfect and peerless, are created from every creature's best. I do not know what of my sex. No woman's face remember save my glass mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel of my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of. But I proud of something too wildly in my father's precepts and therein to forget. I am, in my condition. A prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so, and would no more do this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant I saw you did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, I am this patient law man. Do you love me? O oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound, and proud will I profess with kind event if I speak true. If hollow me, and burn what best has bonded me to mischief. I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to be that, but I am glad. Ah, fair encounter of two most rare affections, heaven's rain grace on that which brings between them. Wherefore weep you? At my unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give. Much less take what I shall die to want. I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress dearest, and I, thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing, here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. And now farewell to half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. Glad if this is they I cannot be, who are surprised with all. 
but my rejoice again, nothing can be more. I'll look to my books, for yet here separate times there much work appertaining. Thou 
down the bottom off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Again? <laughs> Come proceed. As I said, tis custom for him in the afternoon to nap. There thou mayest bring him, having first seized his foot. Or with the log, batter his skull, or punch him with thy stick, or slice his waist in with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he is but a sot as am I, and not one spirit to command. They all hate him as rudely as I. Monster, I shall kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo with herself shall be viceroy's. Dost thou like the black tree? Trinculo. Excellent! Give me thy hand. Oh. 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 I'm sorry I did thee. But while thou livest, keep a black on my <laughs> Within this half hour will he be asleep. Without killing them, I am minor. <laughs> This I will tell my master. Leave, monster. I would I could see this cave where he lives at all. You fools, that you three from the law discipline and prosper. Except 
sperms into the sea, which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which thou thee the power to lay, not for giving, have insist the seas and shores, yea, and all the creatures that give show peace. Be of external Alonso, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you in your ways, whose wrath to guard you from, which here the most desolate isle all falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear light ensuing. <laughs> Of my instructions hast thou nothing big in what thou hast to say. So with good life and observation strange. My meaner ministers their several kinds have done. Oh, my high charms works, and these my enemies are all yet out of their distractions. They are now with my power, and in these fits I leave them. Whilst I go visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose to shroud, and his and mine are left dark. <laughs> Why stand you in this strange death? Oh, it's monstrous. Monstrous! They thought the bellows spoke and told me of it. And the winds did sing it to me, and the thunder. That deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass, and therefore my son in the whose lies bedding. Well, I'll sink him deeper than ever, plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddy. We're one feet at a time. I'll fight their way to door. I'll be thy second. It, and what three of them are desperate? Their great guilt, like poison given to burger, great time after, now gins to fight their spirits. If I have to austerely punish thee, thy compensation makes me. For I have here given thee a third of mine own life, for that for which I live. For once again I tendered thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Herefore, I ratify this, my rich gift, O Ferdinand. Do not smile at me that I boast her of, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. Mm -hmm. Then that's my gift, and thine own acquisition worthily purchased. Take my daughter. Oh, but if thou dost break her virgin not before all sanctimonious ceremonies, and with their full and holy right be ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens that fall to make this contrast grow. But where in hate, sour and discourse and disdain shall the school of the union of your bed with weed so lonely that you shall hate it both. <laughs> Therefore, take heed, as Hyman's land shall reach. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue and long life, with such love as tis now. Shall never melt mine honor into lust to take away the edge of that day's celebration. Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What? Ariel? Oh, my industrious servant, Ariel. What will I put, Master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows, their last service did worthily perform me, and I must use you in such another trick. Go bring the rabble of whom I give thee power here to this place incite them to quick motion. I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine heart. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Ah, with a twink. Before you could say come and go, and breathe twice and cry so, so, each one tripping on his toe, will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No? Oh, dearly, my delicate Ariel. Do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I can see. 
Look at that. Be true. Do not give dalliance too much to rain. The strong is old, so much. Strong to the fire and the blood. Be more abstemious, or else the night will die. I warrant you, sir. The white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor of my living. Well.
blind mole may not see your foot fall. We are now near his cell. Monster, your theory, which you say is a harmless theory, is a little better than play the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss. My nose is great indignation. So is monster. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure with you, look you, thou were but a lost monster. Oh, good, my lord. Give me thy favor still. For the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. So speak softly. All's hushed as midnight's yet. Why? But to lose our bottles in the pool. There's not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite love. This is more to me than my party. Yet this is your harmless fairy monster! I'll back up my bottle when I be hard ears for my life! I pray thee, my king, be quiet! This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief, which will make this island thy own. And I, thy Caliban, for I, thy foot flicker. Give me thy hand, and you begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano! Oh, Peer! Oh, worthy Stefano! Look what a wardrobe they have here for thee! Oh, let it belong full of hot trash! Oh, how monster! We know it belongs to a frippery! Oh, King Stefano! Put off that gown, Trico! By this hand I'll have that gown! Please, shoot that what does thou mean to dolt us on such luggage, fool? Let us alone and do away with the murder first. For if he awakes, from toe to crown will he fill our skin with pinches, make a strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Line is not this my jerkin. Now is the jerkin under the line. I'll jerkin your life to lose your hair and prove a bald jerkin. <laughs> do, do. We steal by line. I thank thee for that gift. Here's a garment for it. Oh, you shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line level is an excellent pass of pig. Here's another garment for it. Come, come, monster. Put some lime upon your fingers. Make away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time. We'll all be turned to particles or to apes with foreheads filling the slow. Monster, lay low to your fingers and have the bath into my hogs and of wine, or else I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go for the yes. charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, they cannot budge till your release. The king, his sister, and yours abide all three distracted, brimful of sorrow and dismay, but chiefly him that you've termed the good old Lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter drops with eaves of reeds. 
Your charm so strongly works so that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost. Dost thou think so, spirit? My wit, sir, were a human. And my shadow. So with their high arms, I struck to the quick. Yet, with my noble reason against my fury, do I take part? The very actions and virtue and his vengeance. They being so penitent. The soul drift of my purpose doth extend. Might have frowned further. I'll release the matter. My charms I'll break. Their senses I will restore. Shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Oh. I hear a joy, and when I have applied some heavenly music, which even now I do to work mine ends upon their senses, which this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, buried certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I will drown my book. And the best comforter to an unsettled fancy. Kill thy brains now, useless boil in thy skull! There stand, for you must bear a spot! Holy Gonzalo, honorable Matty. Holy Gonzalo, my true preserver and the loyal servant whom thou followest. I will pay thy graces home, both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou lot so deuce me as my daughter. Thy sister was a further in the act. Thou art pinched now for the bastion, flesh and blood. You, sister mine, Entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature, with Bastion, whose pieces therefore are most strong, which here have killed your king. I do forgive you. Unnatural though thou art. For understanding begins to stir. The approaching tide will shortly fill the shore that now lies silent and muddy. Not one of them looks on you or would know me. Ariel, fetch the hat and rapier from my son. Quickly, spirit! Thou shalt ere long be free. Where the beast walks, there's the fight in a house with the light here I can't renounce to cry On a bat's back I do fly After summer merrily Merrily, merrily shall I live now Under the blossom that hangs on the bough Where the bee sucks their sky In a cowslip fell I lie there I cash when I do cry, on a black back I do fly. After summer merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. I shall miss thee, my delicate ear, but thou shalt have freedom. So, so, so. A terror and tremble, wonder and amazement inhabit here. 
Show me the heavenly power, guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, <laughs> the ragged Duke of Milan prosper. More sure that a living prince does now speak to thee. I embrace thy body, and to thee in thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. But that thou beest here, no more. Some enchanted trifle to abuse me. As late I have been, I do not know. Thy like pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, this affliction of my mind amends with which I fear. Her madness held me. Thy dukedom I do resign. And do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs, but how can Prospero be living and be here at first? Noble friend. Let me embrace thy age, whose honor cannot be measured nor confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certainly. Uh, welcome, my friends all. But you, my embrace of ladies, were I so minded, I hear you pluck his highness's crown upon you and justify you trick. This time I will tell no tale. The devil speaks now! For you most wickedness, whom to call sister would even infect my mouth. I do forgive that rankest of all. All of them. And require of you my duty, which I know perforce thou must restore. Thou beast Prospero, give us the particulars of thy preservation. How came us thou here? We're three hours since. We were right upon the shore. And, uh, how sharp the point of this remembrance is. I've lost my son Ferdinand. I am woe for it. For I have lost my daughter. Daughter? Heavens, if they were living now in Naples. The king and queen there. That they were I would myself lie by in that Uzi bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I do perceive that these lords of this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason, scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. The words of natural breath. But howsoever you have been gentle from your senses, know that I am Prosper, and that very duke which was thrust forth from the line, who most strengthened on this island, where you were at, was landed to be Lord Arnold. No more yet of this. It is a, not a relation for a breakfast, nor fitting this, this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This cell is my court. Here I have few attendants and subjects none of them. I pray thee, look in. My duty, since you have given me again, I will require you with as good a thing. Content you as much as me, my duty. Sweet Lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. Oh, this proves some vision of the island, and one dear son shall I twice lose. Woo! A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Oh, now let all the tidings of a glad father come to see about. Arise and see how thou camest here. Oh, wonder! How many goodly creatures on earth here! How beauteous mankind is! What brave new world has such people in it? It is new to thee. But what is this maiden whom thou wast to play? Thy else acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that has severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal providence, she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to the famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I've heard renown, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life. And second father, this lady may seem to me. And I am hers, but how strange it will sound that I must ask my child to forgive you. There, sir, so stop. Let us not birth in our remembrances with the heaven is that's gone. My heavenly wept. You should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. For 
Spirit. Tis you that talk forth the way which brought us hither. We say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan? And that his issue should become king of Naples. Oh, rejoice beyond the common joy, and set it down with good on lasting pillars. In one voyage, did Clarabelle find her husband at Tunis, eh? And Ferdinand found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero, his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves when no woman was their own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart, that doth not with you joy. Be it so. Amen. Sir, my liege, do not confess your mind, beating on the strangeness of this business. I pick leisure and shall be shortly single out with the problem, which may seem probable to you of each of these happy things. So when be cheerful and think of each thing. Come here, Spirit. Go for Caliban and his companions. The time is right. Um, they are yet missing of your company, son. A few odd lags which you remember not. A rather portly fellow and a jester of sorts. A And let no man take care of himself, for all is but fortune. <laughs> oh. If these be true spies which I wear in my hand, this speak with a sight. These be brave spirits indeed. I'll find my masters shall be chastised. <laughs> what are these things, my lady Antonio, a money buyer? Very light. What is a latest fiction? No doubt. Mark with the badges of these men, then say if they might be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and once so strong she could control them, make flows and ebbs and deal in her magic without her power. Uh, these three have robbed me, and this misshapen knave, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. These two you must know and all of this. King of darkness, I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. This is now Stefano, my drunken butler. He's drunk now, where had he mine? <laughs> Trinculo is really ripe. But where did they find this grand liquor that hath gilded them so? How camest thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that it, I fear me will not out my bones. I will not feel by going. Why come now, Stefano? Oh, no! <laughs> not Stefano, but a crab. Oh, you would be king of the isle, sir. I should have been a one day. <laughs> this is as strange a thing as I ever did see. Oh, uh, he's as misshapen in his manners as in his form. But go to Sir Rob, to myself. Take with you your companions. As you seek to have my pardon, to enhance me. I dare will and be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What is thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool? Go to, away. Hence, <laughs> stow your luggage where you found it. Or rather, stole it. <laughs> Sir, I invite <laughs> I invite you to your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it outweighs with such discourse as, I now doubt, the story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this time. And the morn will to your ship, and then to Naples, where I hope to see the nuptial of these, our dear beloved son of I will retire to my mind, and my every third thought shall, shall be my death. 
How long have you been the story of your life? You must take the year strangely. I promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sail so expeditious shall catch your fleet far away. Thank you. 